Brian, come on up here, we're ready for you. Brian Lorello, everybody. It's actually maybe a little longer than that. Let me ask a question here. Who in this room would you call yourself a creative? Just put your hand up. All right, good, good. That's what I like to see. So I say that I'm a creative, right? And when I say this, people say, they think in their head, okay, you must be a painter or something like that. But being a creative to me, it's not just art. I think, well, I think that anything can be art, but I think that ideas are creative. You don't have to have technical skill to be a creative person. Um, the argument that I think a lot of us have, and you might agree with me on that, is why are we creative people? I ask myself this all the time. I just can't not do it. I have to make things. I'm a musician, I'm a filmmaker, things like this. Um, and so I think that that's something that comes into play a lot. A question that comes in then is how do we nurture that? Because in this day and age, being a creative person, it's kind of considered laughable. You know, it's like, well, don't you make any money? You know, people say that a lot. And we, we have to nurture creativity as far as I'm concerned. The first most important way to do that, this is something I tell a lot of people that I talk to, is confidence. Confidence in ourselves. I say this all the time, but we have to be confident in ourselves. We have to believe that our work is something worth putting into the world. This comes for the work that we do and how we believe in ourselves as creative people. It doesn't matter what you make, it's important that you have confidence in it as far as I'm concerned. Because if you don't have that, you're not gonna be able to really put this out into the world. It doesn't matter what you make, again, art, video, music, film, anything like that. So one of the ways that we can get, again, sort of that input that makes us keep going is reassurance from others, right? I'm a musician. I love it when somebody tells me, hey man, I really love that track. I love that. That's one of the things that will keep me going. And of course, money. Let's face it, right? Everybody wants to make some money doing something that they love. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a stigma to that, in fact, in this world, I think, where if you say, well, I'm an artist, and you ask for money patronage of your work, it's thought, well, it's not really worth anything, but it is, because if we can eat, we can create, right? But you've got to do the work, and this is something that I've learned a long time ago, is that you have to actually sit down and be creative, and that kind of sucks, I think, sometimes, because you want it to be a spark. You want it to just happen. It doesn't always happen. You have to sit down. You have to write. You have to create. You have to communicate with others. Um, things like Night New Mexico, TED Talks, things like that, inspirational things are really, really important, I think, for nurturing creativity because they show you that there's other people who are doing these things. And then something that I think helps to nurture creativity personally is emulation. I find this a lot, you know. I have these friendly rivalries with musician friends of mine and things like that. They make a song and I go, man, I really want to do that. And I have to catch up to them. And so then that leads into the biggie, right? Rejection. Does everybody know James Dyson, the vacuum guy? the guy who makes the Dyson ball. I remember reading that he said something like two, three, four thousand rejection letters. You're gonna plaster a wall with rejection letters before sometimes you hang the one, the one that gets you, you know, going on it. You have to take a break though. When you do all this work, this is something I find a lot. I go into a cave, you know, I focus on that computer screen or my keyboard or whatever for way too long. You have to take a break. You have to be willing to ask for help. This does help to nurture being a creative person. Because if you don't ask for some help, there are other people going through these things. Lots of you guys have tonight. You've been through what it's like to be a creative person and find that's really hard to do in, in a world of about 8 million distractions, right? You have to be willing to explore yourself. You're an explorer when you are a creative person. You simply are. You're exploring yourself and you're exploring the world. And this is something that's important to remember because it will actually give you the ability to continue doing your creativity. And you have to build a mantra. I know it sounds crazy and hokey and things like that, but mine is I will approach today with confidence, passion, and a positive attitude. I deserve success. I do believe that I do deserve success in the creative things that I pursue because I want them to take me to new places in the world. You have to set goals and you have to pursue them. I know that sounds a little hokey as well, but as you set those goals and you visualize them, it sounds like the secret, right? You start to see them happen. And I believe this because I've been doing this and I see a lot of these things happen in the music and the art that I do. And then you have to nurture others. That's where things, again, like Ignite and TED Talks are really, really, really important because you've gone through this stuff, right? So give it forward to someone else. Show them how you've been through some of the trials that come with being a creative person and how you can help them out. So in closing, believe in yourself, have confidence. Seriously, I really think it's really important whether you're a musician or an artist, anything, believe in yourself. You're creative and you have to embrace that. That's really important. Um, I'm Brian Morrell. 
I'm a musician, I'm a multimedia professional. Some people know me by the name Brian Bockiller here in town. And uh, thank you guys so much for having me tonight.